we're going to need a bigger bookshelf. Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Erica and I appreciate you being here. We are going to be talking about a lot of books today because the sun is shining, the weather is very hot, at least where I am. It's incredibly humid. That means it's summer and I can finally do a summer book haul. These are some books that I've acquired over the past couple of months. I get my books from different places. I do Barnes & Noble. I have a couple of used bookstores here that I go to. I also have a couple of indie stores that I go to. I try to keep an eye out for good deals uh, to pick up books that I know are on my, on my wish list if I can get it at a discount. That's a huge plus. So this is the culmination of the past few months of just going out and looking at books and seeing uh, how I feel. Also going to need to be getting another bookshelf soon. I have one uh, that I'm looking at from Ikea that kind of matches this guy, this big cube guy, but I'll probably end up putting the new one down in my basement. I've got like a lot of wall space down there and not that much wall space and like the rest of my house, weirdly. So I got a weird layout in my house. So anyway, that's uh, I guess that's gonna be my project maybe for the rest of the summer, uh, build another bookcase and start putting stuff on it because we are at that point officially. But today we're gonna talk about the books that I have obtained, like I said, the last couple of months. These are kind of in genre order. I tried to group them the best that I could, but by far the majority that I ended up with today are gonna be fantasy books. So buckle up, we're gonna get started. I picked up a couple of horror books that we'll start with. My Best Friend's Exorcism. This is by Grady Hendrix. I've read a couple of other books by this author and I had mixed feelings about them. I can see, I feel like this is an author where if they, if he writes a book just slightly differently from the way he's been doing it, I could get really, really into it. And so I'm kind of interested to see if at some point in his writing career, he did write a book that I would really be able to connect with. So I picked this one up. This is kind of going to be a play into like 80s supernatural horror if you if you couldn't tell by the cover. Look at that hair. Look at that hair. We're going full 80s, okay? I would say you never go full 80s, but we're going there and we'll see how it turns out. I'm really hoping that we can get to the point to a point where I can find finally say like I understand all the hype around Grady Hendrix because like with his books I feel like we almost get there but there's just been something in the books that I've read from him so far in each one where I'm like I just this isn't doing it for me so hopefully this one is doing it for me. I picked up My Heart is a Chainsaw and Don't Fear the Reaper. These are by Stephen Graham Jones. It's part of a trilogy. The third book is not out yet but I did read My Heart is a Chainsaw a little bit earlier this year. It turned out to be one of my favorite books of the year which I was really pleasantly surprised by because the previous book that I read from him which was The Only Good Indians I didn't I didn't really like that one but this one was amazing it was it it leaned hard into slasher horror if you're a fan of slasher horror movies like specifically from uh, the 80s I think you would probably really enjoy this I really want to see what happens next for our main character I ended up really enjoying the main character I think she's kind of polarizing with her inner monologue I could see some people not liking it because she's got a real kind of stream of consciousness rambling things that you wouldn't necessarily think should be connected but the main character like connects events to them but I feel like by the end of the book you really got to understand her a lot better and it made so much more sense but I liked her throughout the book I thought that she was a believable character so I really want to see what happens next I think the contrast of these covers is really nice not that the covers matter but like let's talk about some nice looking covers covers right so we've got like the red and the white is the third one gonna be a black cover maybe I feel like that would be a good idea saga press if you're listening you all should probably make the third book with a black cover I only got one mystery book as part of this haul and I can't believe it to be fair 
I have been, I've been working on completing my collection of Agatha Christie's in paperback. I already own the entire collection on uh, ebook form, but I really would prefer to have the, the physical format. So I've been working through those. I've completed my Miss Marple collection, but I figured like, do we really need to see me collecting like, I don't know, how many did I buy? Like seven Miss Marple books? Probably not. So, I mean, FYI, I bought like seven Miss Marple books and my Miss Marple Agatha Christie collection is complete. I'll probably try to work through Hercule Poirot next. But uh, for me, someone who really enjoys mystery, the fact that I only have like one mystery book to add to this list, kind of weird, but all right, here we are. Uh, the Bullet That Missed. This is the third book in the Thursday Murder Club mystery series by Richard Osman. I read the first two books in the series. I enjoyed them. I thought they, they were fun for what they are. So I picked up the third one and I know the fourth one is supposed to be coming out, I believe later this year. So what I'll probably do is maybe reread the series from the beginning so I can get this one and then read the final one too that's supposed to be coming out. I did pick up a few nonfiction books. I'm always looking for good nonfiction books to add to my collection here. So the first one I got is Napoleon, A Life. This of course is like a very well-known nonfiction book about uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. I think Napoleon's a very interesting historical character, so I'm definitely interested to read this, especially I would like to read it probably next uh, after I finish my current nonfiction because I know that the Napoleon movie is coming out. I think it's coming out later this year, right? I would really prefer to have read this before I see the movie even though I know it's it's not going to be a documentary, right? It's going to be like a Hollywood, a Hollywood epic probably, but still I would like to go in with much more solid foundation for understanding Napoleon. Palo Alto, A History of California, Capitalism, and the World. This is going to take a critical look at Palo Alto and Northern California, the cultural development and norms, how they impact the people, how it's impacted the locals, the land, the indigenous people that were originally there, you know, different colonialism. It's going to talk about the history of how Palo Alto came to be Palo Alto and what that means today. I am from Northern California, so something like this I find just inherently very interesting. I'm not from Palo Alto, but <laughs> Northern California, I'm very familiar with the area of Palo Alto, so it'll be interesting, I think, to read this book from that perspective. River of the Gods, this book covers the exploration for the origin of the Nile River in, in Africa. And so it's going to follow primarily the expedition that happened, I believe in the 19th century, that was supposed to claim like the prestige for Britain. The explorers that were on this trip to trying to find the source of the river and if they did it would give England like the prestige to be able to say they found it. So it discusses their their trek to find the river but also the lesser known third person on this journey who was from East Africa and who basically it sounds like acted like their guide but isn't really ever spoken about. This book should give me a different perspective of colonial impacts from exploration. My last nonfiction that I picked up, this is one that I've been looking forward to for a while since I saw that it was announced. It's Hey Hun and <laughs> if you if you can't already tell, it's a critical look at MLMs and the kind of harm that they cause to people. So this for sure I've been looking forward to. I've told like all of my friends about it. <laughs> They're also interested in reading this. So maybe this copy is going to get passed around after I finish with it. I've got a couple books that are kind of miscellaneous because I wasn't entirely sure what category to put them in. So here's a couple of miscellaneous books. I got Final Fantasy VII. The Kids Are All Right, a Turk side story. This is supposed to be a prequel to uh, Advent Children, which is a sequel to... <laughs> Stay with me here, people. It's a sequel to Final Fantasy VII. So, I mean, it is a novel. It's not a graphic novel. It's just a novel. I'm intrigued to read this one. I don't know. If you've watched any of my other videos, you might know I love Final Fantasy. I've been playing Final Fantasy for... I don't know, 25 years at this point, like a long time. <laughs> and 
uh, so this, I mean, I, I don't know how I didn't know this existed before now, but it exists, so I'm gonna read it. I also got The Guild Volume 1. This is by Felicia Day and Jim Rugg. This is a graphic novel, and it's a prequel to the series The Guild. Uh, Felicia Day put out a web series. Oh, goodness, when did it start? Maybe 2000 and seven or something like that and it follows her character Sid as she participates in an MMO guild hence the name the guild and it's it's very it's very funny and I love Felicia Day so I grabbed this because uh, I know I said in the June wrap-up I'm gonna be going to comic-con and Felicia Day is supposed to be there I'm really like she's probably the number one person that I want to see at Comic-Con. I would love to get her autograph, so I'm going to take this and see if maybe I can get her to autograph it. If you have not watched The Guild, I strongly recommend it. It's very amusing, especially, I mean, I guess if you've never played video games, maybe you wouldn't find it that funny, but <laughs> if you have ever, like, been into video games, you'd probably find it very amusing. I would say you don't have to be into MMOs to find it funny, because I was never able to get into MMOs. I'm like a single player lady all the way with very few exceptions. So, but I still, I, I find a lot of enjoyment in it. So if you have any experience with gaming of any kind, check out the show, The Guild, and I will be reading this graphic novel hopefully, maybe, fingers crossed, getting Felicia Day's autograph. I picked up a couple modern classics. So I did get a Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. I just recently read Pneen mean <laughs> I do my best with that I read that book by the same author I really enjoyed the writing style of it so I'm hoping this one has a similar writing style I know that this book is controversial and you know I'm always of the opinion like if you don't want to read a book like that's fine you don't have to read a book but I think that books should be available for anyone to read who wants to read them but I am going to be reading a non-fiction uh, called Reading Lolita in Tehran and so I felt like now is the time I should probably read Lolita so that I can really like understand the full depth of what the nonfiction book is about. So going to be reading Lolita. It'll be interesting to finally read a book that has so much discussion and controversy uh, surrounding it. The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter. I understand that this is a gothic novel about, I believe it's a teen girl who gets sent to live with relatives and kind of discover herself and who she is. This admittedly is not necessarily the kind of book that I would normally gravitate to, but a friend actually gave this one to me and, you know, I, I figured I would give it a shot. So we're going to give it a shot. Angela Carter, of course, is a highly respected author. So I'm all I'm definitely interested in expanding my horizons, you know, trying trying authors that I wouldn't necessarily gravitate to. We'll give Angela Carter a try. The Godfather by Mario Puzo. I got this on a deal that I could not refuse. <laughs> it, it was a good deal and Mario Puzo, he's, he's one of my favorite authors. I started reading him when I was, to be honest, I was probably too young to be reading Mario Puzo, but, <laughs> but I did and I've read almost his entire catalog. I think maybe there's like one book of his that I haven't read. Um, but I do, I do enjoy The Godfather. It's not my favorite Puzo book. My favorite one is probably The Last Dawn, but I haven't reread his books in a while, so I'll probably start working my way back through them at some point just to see how I feel about it. But of course, the movie The Godfather is fantastic, excellent. If you haven't seen it, why are you watching this? You should turn it off and go watch The Godfather right now. But also, I mean, Mario Puzo, if you like mafia crime it's he writes some enjoyable books so recommend if you get a chance i end up able to get this trilogy for like less than ten dollars total it's the crazy rich asians trilogy i did read i've read the first and second book but i have not read the third one so i grabbed i grabbed the series i do i thought that this was enjoyable it felt like pretty lighthearted. I watched the movie after I read the first book and I didn't think, I don't know, what I'm about to say might be a controversial opinion, but I didn't really think the movie was very good. 
I, d I mean, I didn't think it was bad. I just, as an adaptation, I was kind of let down because I, I just felt like, I don't know, is that super cliche? The book was so much better. In, in this instance, though, I felt like the book was quite a bit better. I'm not sure. I probably would have had more positive feelings about the movie if I hadn't read the book first. It's not like I didn't like it. I just was constantly comparing it to the differences in the book. So I am going to be reading through at some point. I will I will do the third book. And you know what? I might even reread because I read these like when they first came out. So it's been a while. And I seem to recall the reading going pretty fast so I might just reread the series uh you know in order to actually finish out the trilogy. I don't read very much science fiction but I did pick up a couple science fiction books so I got Aftermath by LeVar Burton. Yes that LeVar Burton. The the LeVar Burton of course of Reading Rainbow and uh, Star Trek fame. I know I've mentioned before I have a special place in my heart for LeVar Burton. I was totally raised on Reading Rainbow and I love Jordy Next Generation. So I saw this. I've been eyeing it for a while it was on a really good a really good sale where I saw it um so I grabbed this one it's going to be an apocalyptic scenario where humanity has at least in the U.S. from the little blurb on the back it's unclear if this is a worldwide problem like <laughs> apocalypse or if it's just U.S. based I guess we'll find out. But apparently after a financial collapse, the US devolves into just like total chaos and civil war and like famine and you know, all of the bad things that go with apocalyptic scenarios. And we see a small group of people, you know, trying to pursue a path that will save humanity. I'm really I, I didn't realize until I don't know, maybe a year ago that LeVar R Burton had written any books. This might be one of the instances where I actually do have to get the audiobook as well because LeVar Burton reading is one of the most calming things I think that exists in this world that we live in. So I might have to get the audiobook and have him read it to me as I read along. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This one has been on my list for a long time, but it's just because like I said, I don't read that much science fiction. It just hasn't come up, but literally I got this for $2. So I, I mean, it's in great condition, so I could not resist. It's pretty high on my TBR. The premise sounds really promising. Try saying that 10 times fast. <laughs> premise sounds really promising. Uh, it's a space opera, which I can certainly appreciate a good space opera, like Firefly, one of my favorite shows of all time, right? But who doesn't love Firefly? So this one, we follow a ship that is going through space and it's kind of like a, a band of rogues doing exploration, you know, space opera-y things. And they, they get like the deal of a lifetime where they're offered a ridiculous amount of money if they go to, well, a small angry planet and do some exploration. So I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of adventure along the way and I'm here for it. Some amusing books, like books that are supposed to be funny that I grabbed. This is the first omnibus for the Jeeves collection by P.G. Wodehouse. Is it Wodehouse? Gosh, I hope so. That's how it, that's how it seems to be anyway. This has been recommended to me over the years. I've never actually picked up a Jeeves novel before, but I'm told they're very funny. I love books that make me laugh. So this is going, this is a collection of three of the books. It's Thank You Jeeves, The Code of the Woosters, and The Inimitable Jeeves. These were originally written quite a long time ago. Like I think the first one was written maybe a hundred years ago. So it's supposed to follow a valet and his employer in London. And again, it's supposed to be very funny. We'll, we'll see if it lives up to the hype. I know I recently saw a video of Jeff Goldblum saying that these are like his favorite novels and I love Jeff Goldblum. So that's kind of what sealed the deal for me in spurring me to get this. I hope this lives up to the hype because I know that there are several other of these omnibuses, omnibusi, omnibi. There are several other of these story collections for Jeeves. <laughs> So I will grab those if I really like this one too. D. 
Dave Barry. I love Dave Barry. I used to many years ago, back when we all actually got newspapers when I was a kid. Uh, I used to read Dave Barry's column all the time. It was one of my favorite things to uh, look forward to every, what was it? It was like every week, maybe a couple times a week or something, his column would come out. I, oh my goodness, I love Dave Barry, just his sense of humor. It's something I can appreciate. I've read most of Dave Barry's books, at least the ones that are not his novels like the ones that are based on his on his articles this one it seems like it's not a collection of his articles i think it's just his like very amusing comedic uh, writing defending his home state of florida so i hope it should be very funny i love dave barry dave barry don't let me down okay i have another florida man here tim dorsey this is an installment in the surge storm series god he's been writing this series for a really long time this is book like I don't know 20 something it's a really long series naked came the Florida man clearly Florida right and so our well our main character Serge right he is he is definitely a Florida man <laughs> he's obsessed with the state of Florida he's obsessed with its history with its lore with its culture and he wants you to be as aware of how interesting it is as he is and he kind of does a little bit of serial killing in his free time um but not like dexter very different from dexter dexter was pretty pretty mentally stable for like <laughs> a psychopath right surge is not he's not but he's it's funny it's very it's it's very like dark comedy if you like dark comedy darker than dexter but like dar both darker than dexter but like lighter than dexter too it's hard to explain this is more outright funny like i laugh out loud at this when it's it was rare that i've laughed out loud at dexter like i've read several of the dexter novels i've watched of course all of the seasons of dexter there were times where I would I would laugh at Dexter, but mostly my amusement was like not laugh out loud amusement. There's a uh, quite a lot of laughing in a very like dark way when I read the Surge Storm series. So if you're interested, you should definitely pick it up. I would not recommend starting here though. Um, I haven't actually read this one, but like I said, we're like 20 books in. You don't necessarily have to read them in order but i would say probably go ahead and just start at the beginning florida roadkill it's perfect right go go check out florida roadkill and see what you think you you, you can get your introduction to surge and let him educate you on what it means to be a florida man the rest of the books that i have left are fantasy and i didn't realize that the majority of the books in this video were gonna be fantasy but here we go. The first one I got, look at this little guy. It's just a little guy. Let me show you for comparison. Look at this little guy. Oh my God. I don't know why I want to talk like this. Like, like a fairy. You, or I don't, you know, when I picture fairies, I know that they like fae can be huge and stuff, but I picture like just a little fairy, just like a little, little woodland fairy. And that's what I feel like goes along with this. I don't know. I don't, I have no idea. I haven't been drinking or anything, I swear. Mistborn, A Secret History. I know that this is not next on my reading list, but again, I got this at a really good price. I know I'm going to be reading it because I've been really enjoying Brandon Sanderson's book. So this is supposed to be exactly what it sounds like, kind of shedding, shedding light on some of the events that were mysterious in the Mistborn trilogy. Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Can you believe that I have never read a Percy Jackson book? I never have. I looked at the publication date for this. I think that it was like 2005 was when it first came out. And I'm pretty sure the reason I didn't get into this was because I was extremely into Harry Potter at the time. And I, I I don't know. I, none of my peers were into this. I feel like it's it ha, it's only been in like maybe the last ten years that old, I almost said older people, people my age. God, I'm not that old yet, am I? The, <laughs> older people have been getting more into this. I get this recommended all the time, so I am finally going to read a Percy Jackson book, The Angel's Game. I have not read this one before, but I. I have read Shadow of the Wind and I really, really enjoyed that book. So I am very interested to finish the series. This should be the second book in the series. I've had a hard time describing what the Shadow of the Wind, like 
summing it up as a book because it as I was reading it, it just felt like so huge in a positive, like a really positive way. It's historical, mystery, thriller, supernatural kind of a thing. <laughs> I'm not going to do it any justice. It's, it's just a brilliant piece of work. I'm expecting the second book is going to be wonderful as well. This is a series that I've seen recommended over and over on some of the book subs on Reddit, and I was finally like, okay, I have to just find these books. Uh, they're not actually that easy to find, so I had to go on. I think I might have finally gotten these on a books, maybe, but... The, these things are huge. This one is an omnibus. It's almost 900 pages. I think it's got six novels in it. This is volume one. Everyone that I see recommend it says it's incredibly funny and I love things that are funny. This follows the adventures of an apprentice wizard and a demon that he meets and they end up in like fantasy adventure hijinks together. I love fantasy and I love hijinks and I want to see that but like I said what really sold me is everyone who mentions this like the first thing they say is that it's really funny and I just want to be entertained like make me laugh and I will probably like your book. I'm hoping I will feel as good about this as everyone else who recommends it. I can be added to the list of people who recommend myth adventures. I don't know how many times I have to say it. If you put a cat on the cover of your book I'll probably buy your book. I just will. It's it's a part of me that I accept. And if you want me to give you my money, put a cat on your cover. Okay, this is a book. It's the cat. <laughs> this is a book. If you didn't know, uh, this is the cat who saved books. As the title implies, this is a book about a cat who wants to save books. So our main character, who is a human, inherits a bookshop that he's going to have to shut down. And one day a talking cat appears and has a request. He wants the human to help him save books from negligent or unappreciative owners. This is supposed to be a heartwarming story. And I mean, that's all well and good, but like, I'm here for the cat, I'll be honest. If you can make me feel like uplifted in the process, that's awesome. But like you've already sold me with the fact that this is about a cat. Senlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. This one has been on my on my to read list for quite a while, I'll be honest. But I finally moved it up and decided to grab it when I saw it because I do have it as one of my books to read for the 2023 Reddit Fantasy Bingo. I'm participating uh, in the Fantasy Bingo. It runs from April of this year to I think like March 31st of next year. And I can't recall which square I put this in, but I... I distinctly remember putting this in a square so I grabbed it and it's it's supposed to be about a main character who has to go into the Tower of Babel to rescue his new wife and along the way encounters a lot of like fantasy challenges that he must overcome and you know character development and from being a mild-mannered scholar to uh, what does it say a man of action so <laughs> Everyone seems to really love this book. I'm hoping I will really love this book. And I mean, if nothing else, I'll read it and I should be able to mark off a Reddit bingo square. The Golem and the Genie. This has been, again, on my list for quite a while. I did borrow this from the library. I read a couple chapters. I knew right away I was going to really like it. So I've just been holding off because I, I prefer to read a physical book when I can. So uh, I grabbed this one, finally going to read through it. It's about, if you couldn't tell by the title, this is about a golem and a genie. They end up meeting and kind of becoming friends. They have to learn how to live and disguise themselves to fit in in, I believe it's around the turn of the century, around 1900 in New York City. So they are just living their lives and 
they end up getting separated, but then some kind of evil brings them back together, you know, evil they must overcome. I really enjoyed the writing for the couple chapters that I, I read. Again, I liked it so much. It's, it's often what I'll do is if I, there's a book that I'm unsure about, if I'm if I look at it, and I'm like, I'm not entirely sure. I feel like this could go either way. I borrow it from the library before, you know, I, I don't just want to go out and buy every book because that would be a ridiculous amount of money. And I feel like it's a huge waste to buy books that I'm not going to like. So I'll borrow them from the library first and start reading it that way. And then if I really like it, I will go and buy it. So that's what happened here. I believe there's also a sequel to this one. And so of course, if I really like this, I'll pick up the sequel as well. The Square of Sevens. Is this going to be a fantasy? To be honest, based on the blurb, I'm still not entirely sure, but this is where I'm sticking it. So hmm, that's what she said. But this, this is where it's going in the video is in the fantasy category. So I guess I'll have to read it to find out for sure. Isn't this, I, I feel like this is a really beautiful edition though. Once again, uh, the UK gets an awesome edition of this book. This is the Waterstones special edition. There's nothing like, unfortunately there's nothing on the cover, but the end pages are quite nice. Look at that. So this book follows a main character. She's a young girl and her father takes her as he travels around the country. He is like a fortune teller and he ultimately befriends what is referred to as a gentleman scholar. It's not that often that you hear the term gentleman scholar, but it's used in this blurb here. So something of course happens to the father tragically. So now our main character is going about trying to figure out like the mystery of who is she really? What happened to her mother? Really? Are there people that are really after her as her father always said that they were? What's going on with that? So she kind of has to go around England getting information to solve this mystery. The Arrows Trilogy by Mercedes Lackey. I, I read these many, I don't know, in the 90s uh, probably is when I read these. So I'll be quite honest. I have no memory of what the books are actually filled with, <laughs> except I remember having very positive feelings about them. So I picked up this very convenient trilogy edition and I'm going to read back through this because I know Mercedes Lackey has so many books. And so I feel like this will be a good uh, launching point for me to restart with her to go through her world building. The Library of the Dead. This is another one. It's been on my on my reading list for a really long time, but I finally pulled the trigger on it because I am going to use this for one of my uh, Reddit bingo squares as well. And we follow a main character who can communicate with the dead. She ends up being told by one of the ghosts that there's something or someone that's like bewitching children. And so she takes it upon herself to investigate this further. She ends up with like learning about occult things and magic stuff and trying to solve this mystery. I'm a sucker for books about books. So just like I'm a sucker for if you put like a cat on your book cover, if you put anything like books or a library on your cover, like I'm, I'm just going to read it. I will. Speaking of books about books, <laughs> the book that wouldn't burn. This is overdue for me to pick up. I know I've been seeing so many people grabbing this one. Once again, you put like a library or book stuff on the cover of your book probably going to pick up your book. So good marketing job. This is the first book in what I think is supposed to be a new trilogy. It's a new series anyway. And it's going to start with a boy and a girl. I believe the boy has been living like completely isolated in a library. The girl has been living in a tiny settlement. They're both kind of ignored, overlooked, forgotten by the world in general, but they come together ultimately to go on a journey of knowledge exploration and save the world. Frankly, the synopsis is not that fleshed out, but I'm okay with that because I really like to go in without knowing hardly anything when there's something I want to read or watch or play. Like I am so averse to spoilers. You have no idea. So I'm okay with the minimal information. The fact that there's this vast library on the cover, I mean, that that's enough to sell me. This is a book about books. All right, finally, the last book, although I'm not sure this should count as one because there's actually six books in here and it's like huge. 
<laughs> this is the entire Earthsea collection and it's illustrated and it's beautiful and it's stupidly heavy. So it's got uh, the six Earth Earthsea books in here. I've read, I know I've read the first couple of books in here, but I was, gosh, I was probably really young when I read them. Again, the 90s. So I'm like, you know what, it's time. There's this really awesome illustrated edition, like some of that. So figured it was time to pick this up. If you want something, I mean, these are considered classics, right? One of the the foundations of modern high fantasy. So yeah, this is huge. I'm probably gonna end up having to like sit at the table while I read it because literally this is super heavy. <laughs> But now I've got the entire thing, so I might do a video where I just read through this entire thing and do a little review as I go along of each book, because the books themselves are are pretty short. It's just that all together, this this thing is like a thousand pages. It's it, it's pretty hefty. That is all that I have for this little summer book haul that I've got. So that went a lot faster actually than I thought it was going to. I got to tell you, these stacks of books they seem a lot bigger. <laughs> than when I actually just went through them. So let me know. Let me know if you have any of the books that I've I've mentioned today. If you've read them, uh, if you plan to read them, you know, what do you think? Uh, did I did I get some good ones? Let me know if there's any other book recommendations that you have for me based on uh, what you've seen in this video today too. I'll probably do another um, another video like this later this year when I've had time to amass uh, <laughs> amass some additional books. So this is definitely going to warrant a new bookcase. Uh, as you can see, we just went through quite a bit. Now that I have my entire disc world, well, I think I'm still missing. I, I've got um, just a handful of the disc world hardcovers that I'm collecting to still to still get maybe like five. But that alone, like I need I need a small bookshelf for that. So Yes, the new bookshelf, probably going to have to hit up Ikea and uh, see what I can do about getting another one because otherwise I'm going to be, I don't know, I'm going to look like uh, the wizard Merlin, you know, with like the giant stacks of books and stuff. And like my cat won't tolerate me living like that for very long. So we're going to have to get a shelf. Anyway, <laughs> that's all that I've got for you today. Thank you so much for coming by. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. I'll see you next time. Thanks.